Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're watching, right around the world. That's right, the time for practice is over. This is the real deal, and it's time for round one of this new SRL F1 2019 season. And it's great to have your company. Like I said, wherever you're watching, right around the world tonight, it's the opening round here at Albert Park in Australia. And as we just wait for the drivers to get ready to go racing, we've had uh, a bit of a change of plans. We're having an 8.05 p.m. start, as uh, Jason's been kind enough to point out. Using some new software tonight for the new season, of course, as well. We're using OBS, the open broadcast software, on the PC. So we'll be able to see your comments as they happen live and exclusive here on the Kid Buyers channel. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic as I welcome my co-commentator back for another week, Bradley Marshall. I've got that many uh, b that many bloody cords and screens going here, Brad. It's uh, like NASA at the moment, but a big e good evening to you, first of all. And we're back for another season. How good is this? Yeah, back for another season. And this is uh, my first season commentating, so it's very exciting for me. And... Um, Got a lot of drivers on the grid for the first race, so hopefully we're able to keep these numbers up during the season. All the pre-season social races and practice rounds are done, and the season starts tonight, and I'm eager to see who will come out on top. It's going to be absolutely fantastic, and like I said, it's uh, great to have everybody's company here tonight. And uh, don't forget to get your comments in on the live stream. We've had a few of them already, like we do each and every week. Uh, BK Bailey has said racing for Antoine tonight, fellas. And Jason, uh, 805 start, like we mentioned. Cart dude saying, let's put on a show tonight. And we've been seeing some pretty competitive times in practice here. And, uh, well, it's going to be hard to, uh, to pick a winner out of this slot, Brad. They've all been setting pretty quick times uh, in the lead up to this one tonight. It definitely will be hard to pick who's going to come out on top and, uh, I've been in a few practice sessions with the boys and they're very, very fast. Uh, definitely glad I made the switch to the commentary box because, uh, boy, I feel like I was in a GP2 engine compared to these guys. Yes, uh, plenty of uh, pretty handy peddlers out there tonight as, uh, as BK said the big kahuna. Uh, Bailey Kennedy saying, Renault to come up big tonight, you can bank on it. And uh, we might have a look at the teams tonight. We've got team one is Hef and Jason uh, in the Ferrari. Then it's Brody and Nemo in the Williams. And then Sam Cham and Alex Mann in the Alfa Romeo. And then it is that man, BK and Donga. Who could forget uh, about the famous Donga dive bombs, both in the Renault. And uh, Big Dog and V8 Man in the McLaren for this season. And then it's Honest Crook and Coblo in the Red Bull, and then it's Fubbles and Jared in the Toro Rosso. Daniel Sun and Harry will be taking the Mercedes tonight, and Ridey and Rick are in the Racing Point, formerly Force India car. Compact and Crunken are in the Haas, and uh, as uh, Sam's been good enough to join us on the chat, saying only if you don't get onto the corner banking it too much, and I think he's having a bit of a shot there at, uh, at Bailey. And uh, if somebody else could close the door, that would be absolutely fantastic. As uh, we're just counting down now, Brad, the tension. We've got 11 viewers on the stream. How exciting is this? Just two minutes to go until we get underway. A full grid. And uh, this is absolutely fantastic. You can feel the tension. You said it's uh, much better to be up here commentating, but you can still feel the tension in the commentary box as well. Oh, definitely. I, I've been ecstatic all day for this. Like, I even said to my mum earlier today at a doctor's appointment, like... I cannot wait for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we have no Red Bulls or Racing Points tonight as I'm looking at the list. So that's a bit unfortunate, but uh, hopefully they'll come back strong in the next round. And uh, just uh, Kane there joining the live stream saying, let's go boys. BK saying, hashtag Nemo Nation. Uh, looking for a solid P16 in a 15 man race. And uh, Butler also uh, racing for Antoine tonight. Of course, both in the Renaults. And uh, I did get a message from Bailey throughout the course of the week, and he did say that uh, they both will be running, uh, BK that is, and uh, Butler and both in the Renault cars will be running uh, the tributes to Antoine Hubert, of course, for the Renault team, both running number 19 and uh, both using helmets based off uh, his F2 2019 helmet and also his GP3 2018 helmet as well. And uh, as, as everyone joining the live stream, Jason just saying, let's get this underway. Sam, intro time. 
And uh, that's if Fom doesn't block us. That's right. But here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go racing. It's a new season. SRL. Here we go for round number one. One light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights, pause. And it's go, go, go. Inside line for the next corner. They almost touch. This is so, so close. We've got this spicy battle in the remaining four laps of this race. And now they're side by side. Oh, my goodness. Have you got any fingernails left here? Look at that. Wilco hangs it around the outside. Foot to the floor. Pedal to the metal. Who is he? But Carp Dude is fighting back. Oh, Jesus. Look at this. It's crisscross action. So, uh, oh, he's come out right in the middle of, uh, of a pretty intense battle. Oh, look at this. You couldn't have got the timing any better, Carp Dude, because he's got Honest Crook. Look at that for a camera angle. Honest Crook in the Williams BK and the Ferrari of Hef. Look at that. What action we're seeing here tonight in both races. And Bubbles just sends Jacko a little bit wide, but Jacko sticking with it. And down the inside now, Big Donger for size. Just gets around the two of them. He says, piss off. I'm getting up into third position. And is that Wilco? No, it's the two Big Dongers, Big Donger and Big Dick. Both going at it around the outside in a frantic opening lap of this race. How good is that? Like we said, a brand new season and a brand new championship. Who will be the new SRL champion as uh, we get ready for the cars to come out on to the circuit to get this new season underway? And uh, let's, uh, Nemo just saying, let's start the Wilco counter now. It's a little bit unfair, isn't it? And Sam saying, more chance of hearing about Wilco than there is of the sun rising tomorrow. So, oh, I'll tell you what, the two, a uh, couple of cars, they could have, that could have been in a, what do you call it? A bloody unsafe release there, uh, Brad, in the pit lane. But uh, Amazing Owl says, come on, Cart Dude, do me proud. So it's great to have everybody's company, and we might even uh, get some information up on the screen, and we might even see what's happening out on track as we join Nemo on his, uh, on his out lap. You can see there, we'll just go with the information on your screen, currently uh, on the soft tyre, uh, as are all the drivers here tonight. And uh, boy, 11 people watching this stream. This is incredible. And uh, we're right on board with Nemo. Harry is also on his outlap along with Daniel Sun. 18 minute qualifying session here this evening for this race tonight. Followed by a 50% race, Brad. And uh, I think we are expecting a one-stopper here tonight, unless uh, somebody decides to do something a bit different and change it up a little bit. Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely a one-stop strategy today. I mean, you could try the two-stop, but it's definitely going to be slower than the one-stop. And then again, the weather could play a factor. It is Melbourne. They do get four seasons in one day down there. So anything's possible. Certainly is. Uh, now, we mentioned the teams and the driver lineups a little bit earlier on this evening. And uh, as Wilco says, a dry quality, cloudy, but a dry race. Uh, and there are some drivers missing tonight, Brad. We've got uh, Jared, Coblo, Wrighty, and Honest Crook. And we may have been expecting Dregler to fill in one spot as a reserve driver in the Red Bull, but I don't think he has shown up tonight. And uh, some race notes here this evening. Watch for the start. We'll see drivers who get good starts. Usually, uh, Brad are the ones running traction control, but uh, a little bit controversial, but this is an assists league, and, uh, well, we've got assists are allowed, so technically, it's not that bad. Uh, it does make a big difference. We even tested this last night, my myself and Jason, like, earlier in the afternoon, and I decided to put on medium traction, like the majority of uh, people are using and it definitely gave me an advantage off the start so if you see any of the guys like Jason, Hef, Jono bogged down at the start it's because these guys are running with no assists yes it's going to be interesting to see like we said keep an eye on that we've also got some uh, penalty hotspots this uh, it's not like the, the snicker or the hotspot in the cricket but uh, we've got some penalty hotspots uh, we've got strict corner cutting on I do believe tonight and uh, watch out, turns 1, 4, 6 and 11. All hot spots, Brad, for the uh, corner cutting warnings. And you can be on a hot lap here, but if you just 
sneak the wheels too far off the black stuff, you'll get punished for it. Yeah, you definitely will. A lap here can be invalidated so quickly. And it's actually happened to a lot of the guys at the first corner. Their lap's done within the first second that they've started it. Turn 11 and 12 can catch you out as well. It's so fast through there, and it's it's actually Wilco's favourite part of the track. And I have to say that it's mine too. You flick the car in so fast through there, but if you take it too early, you're going to get that lap invalidated. No doubt about that, as uh, Sam crossing him great to have you with us sam he says i think hotspots should be introduced to f1 we might be onto something uh, brad is harry he's onto something with a 121.036 that's right and uh, great directing from kid buyers i can hear you all out there uh, just uh, yelling that out at your tv screens because uh, i've joined him on his on his warm down lap but uh, daniel's on there so it's mercedes one two is hef he comes across the line with a 122.323. And we might get that gap to the leader. There we go on your screen now. And uh, so there we go. Harry all out on his own with a 121.036. And Cart Dude now, who uh, showed some pretty good pace uh, in the practice races leading up to tonight. He's, uh, he's, he's just gone and set a quick lap. Still three tenths off of Harry, though, so Harry's looking good currently, Brad, on provisional pole position. He definitely is, and I believe that he can even go faster than that. I believe I seen him set a 20.9 yesterday in one of the practice sessions. So he's unbelievably quick, and he's still got time on the table. At the moment, I'm riding on board with Wilco, who's on a lap. It's been a bit scrappy, so we'll see what he comes out with. But I reckon we've got to look out for a lot of people in this fight because a lot of them are actually able to get into the 21s. It's going to be who can get maximise the most out of the car and get into that 20 that I reckon will get the pole. Yes, uh, it's going to be interesting. Still 12 and a half minutes to go in this session. As Sam says, Harry just made a mess in his trousers because you mentioned him. And I heard you mention that famous name uh, just before there, Wilco, who is on a hot lap. Uh, 122.177 and uh, I don't think we've mentioned him so far tonight but there he is our man Wilco and uh, well apparently uh, in Formula One terms uh, they reckon Ferrari uh, of course uh, they reckon they get you know a bit of favoritism there but uh, anyway so it's the first time I've mentioned Wilco everyone's got a Wilco counter on tonight so uh, keep an eye out for that but a 122.177 for Wilco and the two Ferraris as Hef, his teammate, comes into the pits now with a 122.323. And uh, we keep going through the order then. Still a few drivers yet to set a lap. Uh, Nemo down there in P10. Sam just currently on his out lap in the Alfa Romeo. And then it's BK. Bailey there in 12th. And also his teammate, Big Donna. Uh, Donga. Donna. Uh, Donga there. Jeez, I tell you what, those two are between him and Big Dick Johnson. Uh, I get those two mixed up all the time. As the Merc comes into the pit lane, there's a yellow flag in Sector 3. And uh, who we've got here? We've got Fubbles now with a 123.151. His best lap so far. He's uh, done two laps on these soft tyres. And we might ride on board with this man up to seventh gear. Look at that. He's used up all of his battery. So he's going to be missing a little bit of power on the final part of this lap, Brad, which is interesting. Yeah, it's something that we noticed in the practice session yesterday. He decides to have an, another lap when his battery power is basically down. Luckily for him, this is an in lap, but it's something that he's definitely got to watch out for because if you're doing that during the race, you're going to fall behind by like a matter of seconds really quickly. ERS is something that you've got to manage and manage well, and those who do that succeed the most in the race. It's all about uh, managing the tyres, the brakes, the DRS, the ERS, you name it. Ten minutes to go in this session now, Brad, as we ride on board with Sam, yet to set a quick lap here on the Alfa Romeo tonight. And we're having a few uh, issues with DRS. Uh, Butler is uh, having some DRS issues. And Wilco, our man Wilco, ding, as the Wilco counter goes off, uh, he says, my DRS wasn't working either, WTF. So some issues. But like you said, Brad, that's just uh, what the drivers have got to face, don't they, uh, in, in this league racing i guess it's definitely something that they got to face and unfortunate for them i don't know how they can overcome that because drs does play a vital part around here with it taking up the two biggest straights so you're going to lose some time there 
Um, so, I don't know how that's happened. Maybe they've had a problem. But that's quite weird that their DRS isn't working in uh, the qualifying session, which is where they probably need it the most. You want to be higher up in the field and not be in that midfield to lower back. Because anything can happen in that area, there could be crashes galore. You want to be starting at the front, so those guys that have got the DRS button working, they're definitely looking like they're going to come out on top. Absolutely, is uh, Crosso there. And Sam just saying, uh, DRS conspiracy. He reckons Williams have paid the big bucks uh, to get some of the big boys out of the game. As uh, we ride on board now with Sam, he said a 122.228, so it's very tight there. We've got three drivers in the 1 minute 21s and about half a dozen or so in the 122s as we'll keep scrolling through now. As Hef, his best time is a 122.323. As uh, Big Donger there, we've got the two Renaults in third and fourth, Ferrari sixth and eighth. As uh, we look at the Hef now, and is he going to encounter some traffic? No, as uh, Harry retires from the session, Brad. So uh, Harry might just, he, put, he might have put the cue in the rack and thought that'll do me a 121 flat. No one's going to beat that. He's definitely uh, put the rack in the queue, or as you said. Um, but yeah, with, it, with, with eight minutes left, that's questionable. The track is going to ramp up with uh, 15 cars on it. 13 now due to Harry retiring, also Crumpton retiring. But that's that's big balls to retire that early on into the session. Certainly is plenty of time remaining, like you said, Brad, as the number 69 Ferrari, that of the Hef, otherwise known as Dave Heffernan to his mates, coming around the last couple of corners here. On to the main straight. And uh, thank you, Sam. Harry has crashed out. So there you go. That answers that question as... Uh, here he comes, the Hef comes across the line, and he sets a 122.2, which I think is slightly up on his previous time, and it just gets him a kitten's whisker in front of Sam there in P8. And now Nemo there with a 122.5. And uh, so everybody either in the 121s or the 122, so it's very, very competitive. And uh, the other day when we were practicing, I could only set a 123, so we've got some pretty hand handy peddlers tonight. Like we mentioned, as, uh, as Ferrari, just uh, Jason is faster than you. Ping! As the Wilco counter goes off again, we're right on board with this man. He's six tenths up through the first sector. This man is up and about. That's right, we've mentioned him again. And uh, if he keeps this sort of pace up, he might be very, very close to the 121s, Brad. Uh, he definitely will be. And it's not a surprise if he gets into the 121s. He has done it before. Um... It'll be interesting to see if he can crack that 20 though. Uh, you know, I've seen Harry do it. Jason hasn't been able to do it yet. But I reckon, as methodical as he is, it is definitely possible for him to hit a 20 in this session. Yes, here he comes. Six minutes now remaining in this session. Wilco then down to second gear. Yellow flag in sector three, but we're going to stick with this lap. And uh, boy, uh, here we go. So across the line, seventh gear, eighth gear, using all the battery then across the line. It's a 120.8. He did it. He did it. Wow. Pole position for our man Wilco. And we're talking conspiracy theories and Wilco counters. But boy, oh boy, we just happened to be on board with him as he set the provisional pole position time. And he'll be pretty happy with that. A couple of tenths quicker than Harry. And, uh, well, I've got to say that that might be it for this session, unless either Cart Dude BK or one of the others can go quicker. Because, uh, well, with Harry out, it's going to be hard to see anybody beating that one. It definitely is going to be hard to see anyone beating that one. I, I imagine Jason would be ecstatic in the cockpit right now. He would be going off. He would be celebrating. He would take this as a win already. He has been wanting to get into this 20-point... Uh, 20 point something area for so long now and he's just gone and cracked it I don't know what the others have in the tank but with only five minutes left in this session the track will ramp up more so times may fall and Jason may fall but you know we're gonna just have to see wait and see what happens certainly are as a uh, cart dude there is he on a hot lap no he uh, looks to be on a slowing down lap at the moment as the two Renaults are in the pits we might ride on board with Big Dog Johnson, otherwise known as Big Dick Johnson. 
as uh, as I'm just getting so many messages through at the moment, but the live stream comments, they're going off as Butler, otherwise known as the Big Donger himself. Brad, a little bit of controversy there saying Rick Oz uh, might have been blocking him on that lap. So uh, I'm not sure who the race stewards are, but uh, we're just here to commentate, but we'll have to uh, wait and see what the outcome of that is. But four minutes remaining in this session now. And Big Dick Johnson currently inside the top six. Good enough for a third row start on the grid tonight. But can he improve on that? Uh, like we said, it's going to be a corny, corner cutting paradise, I reckon. Turns 1, 4, 10 and 11, I think uh, it was from memory. But here he comes. 11 people watching the live stream. Don't be shy at all. Just get your comments in and we will read every single one of them. Uh, providing they are appropriate, of course, for this time slot as, boy, that was a waste of time as Big Dick Johnson comes into the pits, Brad. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I thought he was on the lap as well, but he's uh, just come into the, into the pit lane. He may have enough time to switch on to, to another set of tyres and go out. As we see his teammate uh, call it quits for this session. Uh, so he's down in 13th position, not improving on that. Uh, but Jono may have time to slip on some more soft tyres, get out there and go again. Yes, here we go. So three minutes remaining, Brad. So just enough time to get going again and uh, have another crack at us. We'll uh, ride on board with Big Donger, the man who says he was blocked by Rick Oztek, who's down there in P14. But uh, two and a half minutes uh, and some change remaining tonight. So this will be interesting as uh, there's a Ferrari up ahead of the Renault tonight. You can see there the lovely tribute uh, helmet there to Antoine Hubert, of course, uh, part of the Renault Young driver program. As, uh, as we go with Big Donger now, who's just starting his hot lap. And uh, Brad, you've had plenty of experience around this Albert Park circuit. Uh, just talk us through a hot lap here riding on board of the Renault. Uh, so he's just going into the third corner. He's going to take fourth corner and stay in fourth. And then you come through this fifth corner right here. And you take too much curb and it's going to send you into the wall. Trust me, I've had experience. Uh, then you got turn six and turn seven, very fast following. And then uh, you're coming up to this area where, I mean, if you're bold enough, you can make an overtaking maneuver into here. And then you come through. Oh, as he's gone a bit wide and he's kept it off the wall. Unfortunately, that's going to be the lap done for him as he retires, but he's coming up to that fast 11 and 12 section, which is probably the most sexiest part of the track I've ever seen in my life and how fast people go through that. All right, I'll just, I'll just have to stop you there, Brad. You're just getting a little bit too excited. I know it's... Oh, look at this! Oh, my goodness me. There was a Williams there. I was just riding on board, Brad, with, uh, with Nemo. It was coming through uh, the very fast left right handed there, but I think he might have had his lap blocked. No, in fact, he's on an outlap. I take that back as we ride on board now with Compaq. And uh, Butler says, I'm done. And Amazing Hour says, interesting to watch some different lines. He got offered to run in this a while ago by Wilco, but he's very busy. And he reckons a 119.8 might be uh, a tad too fast. And he's enjoying the live stream so far. Much easier to say it than, uh, than I guess when you're out there, but it's great to have your company. Amazing hour here tonight. So less than a minute to go in this session. What can Compaq do in the Haas? Uh, well, we'll see. He's starting a hot lap here into turn one. Very important to uh, not take too much of that curb because your lap will get invalidated, of course, if you're uh, too greedy on those curbs. Down to turn three. Uh, who could forget this corner where Fernando Alonso and Esteban Gutierrez uh, went off and Martin Brundle. Uh, went rolling off there back in the first race back in 1996. And uh, this uh, track has hosted the Australian Grand Prix since 1996. And before then it was Adelaide. Uh, also a pretty uh, a pretty good track as uh, the big man's joined us. They talk about a Wilco counter. I reckon we need a, a Big Shep counter as well. As Big Shep's joined us from the Beach Hut Brewery in Scoresby, Victoria. 3179. He's just had a sample of the Coconut Porter which is 4.3%. And uh, he said uh, said to say hello. So big hello to Alan, Shep, Shane and the crew down there at the Beach Hut Brewery in Scoresby. And how much do we love them? Uh, stick around Shep and co down there at the Beach Hut Brewery because we'll be getting underway shortly, Brad. And I've got to say, I uh, wouldn't mind a beer at the moment, but uh, we've got to stay professional up here, don't we, in the commentary box? Definitely have to stay professional. 
wouldn't want to have a few berries and now, uh, you know, go off topic. But uh, it was interesting. Uh, I was just on board with Nino, and it seemed like he was going faster, but unfortunately had a moment uh, up into the corners before 11 and 12, so at turn 10. Uh, unfortunate for him, he's starting down in 11th, and uh, that's not the best territory to be in if you want to, you know, avoid any contact, as uh, Sam Cham's just gone and put himself up into 5th place. So Sam there getting up in to 5th position, like you mentioned, Brad, as we ride on board with the Williams. We might keep flicking through. Compact, uh, currently in P12 as BK. Says he could have got second, he reckons. Cart dude interrupting his lap, so we've had a few issues with uh, with blocking. And uh, as James Barton says, gotta love when you have no car noise. So uh, I'm assuming Braddy's referring to his own uh, his own PlayStation, and everything's coming through loud and clear on this one. But uh, well, that is qualifying done and dusted. Great to have your company, guys. Big Shep down there, Beach Hut Brewery style in Scoresby. BK James Barton, amazing hour. And, uh, and Moza. So, and Moza says, are my comments hidden? You know I bring an entourage with me, right? And, uh, well, they're not hidden, Moza, to answer your question. They're right up there on your screen, up in lights at the moment, mate. But ten people watching the live stream was compact in the house. Oh, my goodness. And uh, he ran right up the backside of, of the Renault of BK there. But uh, I think we're almost done, Brad, for this qualifying session with Wilco currently in P1. Harry, who retired a long time ago in P2. And I think, have we got anybody else on a hot lap? Uh, no, they're just waiting for Neiman to go into the pits, actually, and so that'll end the session. Everybody, there's a few cars still out on track. Sam? No, everybody's on their slowdown lap. And Big Shep says, well done, Wilco. Our man Wilco getting pole position, a 120.898 for him. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I just... Uh, hey, we, we might get done by FOM again. Oh, sorry. We might not want to do that. <laughs> we, we can't do that. We can't do that, can we? Uh, we got done by FOM last week. As uh, I seem to have got some rewards there. I've got some XP. I think I might have nearly leveled up. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't even done anything. But there we have it. Your top five. Wilco taking pole position ahead of Harry Ryan in second place for Mercedes AMG Petronas then it's Williams that's the highest we'll see a Williams for a long time I reckon Cart dude in third BK in fourth there in the Renault and then it's Sam in the top five as we get ready to go racing for a new season it's round one here in Melbourne one light two lights three lights four lights five lights pause and it's go 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 Inside line for the next corner, they almost touch. This is so, so close. We've got this spicy battle in the remaining four laps of this race, and now they're side by side. Oh my goodness. Have you got any fingernails left here? Look at that. Wilco hangs it around the outside. Foot to the floor, pedal to the metal. Who is he? But Carp Dude is fighting back. Oh, Jesus. Look at this. It's crisscross action. So, uh, oh, he's come out right in the middle of, uh, of a pretty intense battle. Oh, look at this. You couldn't have got the timing any better, Cart Dude, because he's got Honest Crook. Look at that for a camera angle. Honest Crook in the Williams BK and the Ferrari of Hef. Look at that. What action we're seeing here tonight in both races. And Bubbles just sends Jacko a little bit wide, but Jacko sticking with it. And down the inside now big dog up for size just gets around the two of them he says piss off i'm getting up into third position and is that wilco no it's the two big doggers big dogger and big dick both going at it around the outside in a frantic opening lap of this race As we see the cars on their formation lap here at Albert Park before the race tonight, uh, we'd like to pay a special tribute, of course, the uh, tragic passing last weekend of Antoine Hubert, who, uh, of course, passed away tragically in the F2 feature race last week. Just 22 years of age, the French driver, uh, former GP3 champion, well on his way to F1, and uh, we sadly lost him last weekend. So before we get underway tonight, We'll be having a minute's silence to pay our respects to Antoine Hubert.
there we have it. One light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights. Lights out and away we go here for the opening race of this championship as Wilco moves across straight away to try and cover off Harry in the Mercedes. But Harry is into the lead and Jason is off onto the grass and he's out and oh he's off at the back both Ferrari's in trouble there's a Williams off as well so a bad bad start for our man Wilco if you've got the Wilco counter on that is but uh, here we go so lap one out of 29 15 drivers 29 laps in this opening race of the season as Rick Oztek's been disqualified early but what about Wilco the man that was on pole position Brad is way down in 13th drama in the opening lap of this race a big drama as two of the big contenders for this title in my books uh, have really had a really bad start. Jason went from first all the way down to 13th and Big Donga uh, had a moment at turn 5. This is going to be a fight back and drive from Jason. I believe that he'll be able to do it but he's not going to be happy with himself and uh, if he's fuming at himself that may lead to more errors but I think he can keep himself composed and he'll be able to bring this back for a points finish. Well, let's hope so. He's already made up two positions, three positions now, as we come through to complete the opening lap. New Zealand, Ryan, big hello to you. He says, Harry, and uh, that's all you really need to say. Here we go across the line then, lap one out of 29 here tonight. And we ride on board with the Mercedes-Benz of Harry Ryan into the lead, and he sets the fastest lap there, a 130.1 .1 on the opening lap of this race. We've got BK right behind him as Daniel Sun now gets a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. So three drivers into the pits at the moment. Wilco, Daniel Sun and Nemo all electing to make pit stops early. And a very interesting strategy call there as BK looks to go down the inside of Harry, but he's nowhere near close enough, that's for sure. And these two guys, 2.2 uh, seconds. Uh, so they've pulled out a bit of a gap to third place already, Brad. Uh, they have, and to be honest, they're in the box seat right now. They've got a bit of a gap to see in Two of their big, like, contenders have been taken out in this first race. So it's going to be interesting to see who can come out on top. As these two are fighting tooth and nail against each other. And it's going to be exciting to watch. Unfortunate for Nemo, Wilco, and Dennison. They all had to pit on the first lap. So they probably chucked on the hard tyres. They may be able to make it right to the end of the race, but they're going to be severely warm. So they may take it to a, to where there's like nine laps to go and jump on a set of socks. Here we go then, lap two out of 29 in this race as Harry now pulling out a little bit of a gap. Back to BK as Harry set the quickest lap before BK set it. So Bailey, 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 there with a 126.2 here tonight. And, uh, well, interesting stuff. So uh, back to Sam Cham there in P3. Just ahead of Big Dick Johnson in the McLaren. Right on the back of him, keeping Sam on us there in P4 as we'll go through the field. And who would have thought, Brad, the lead Ferrari there, the Hef in P5 ahead of Fubbles a bit, uh, well, a couple of seconds further back. And then it's V8 man Dane Williams from Queensland. And one of our favourites uh, here, if I don't say myself, my, myself, I can't talk tonight. There's a Carp dude as well, well down the field in P8. Then it's Compact and Crumpkin there. So Haas 9 and 10th. And they will be asking a few questions down there with Gunter Steiner at Haas. And then it's Daniel Sun in P11. And uh, well, make that P12 now as Wilco. The Wilco counter, well, I don't know whether we'll get the Wilco counter as much tonight, Brad, but uh, he is doing well. He's up into 11th, almost into the points. But forget about that because look at this, BK has got into the lead. And oh boy, I can already see the comments and the feedback, can't you Brad, that uh, we were looking at Wilco when the lead battle was going on. But it's happened so much in reverse that I'm sure Wilco won't mind. But look at this, where can you see Harry in the Mercedes having another go as BK comes across the line. Oh, Daniel Sun's left the session. 15 drivers have started, just 13 remain and 11 people watching the stream. Oh my goodness, how good is this? But uh, boy, they're swapping positions at the moment and I reckon Harry's lining up to have another go, Brad. It's definitely lining up and he's probably going to stick to him through these sectors and line him up for the DRS straight that comes out of turn 12. He's definitely got to wait for the DRS uh, parts to pass him 
And it's a lot easier to pass with the DRS than just uh, going into a standard corner without DRS. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I believe Danielson just quit because it wasn't his night. And that's very unfortunate for him. So hopefully next week he'll be able to bounce back and uh, we'll uh, be able to see the race through. Not a good attitude at all, and uh, well, as Nemo sets the quickest lap of 126.1 way down there in 12th, but he's uh, he has been into the pits and got a brand new set of soft tyres. As DRC Jared says, Harry, Harry, as uh, Harry Ryan 19 now all over the back of BK, but BK uh, just keeping his composure here tonight. Lap four out of 29. As uh, Big Shep, being good enough to join us yet again, says, Come on, Wilco, just having some onion rings and mac and cheese balls with salsa and some more frothies down there at the Beach Hut Brewery in Scoresby, Victoria. One of our main sponsors. Uh, jump on board while you can, folks. But big hello to Shep, and I uh, hope you're enjoying the stream tonight. Lap 5 out of 29, and uh, we've had a few drivers pit. As we can see, the big loser there on in the opening few laps, Wilco, down 10 positions. Cart dude as well. Uh, we missed what happened to him. I think we saw a Williams off. He might have been involved in that incident on the opening lap, Brad. He may very well have. And it could have also been with uh, Big Donga, who uh, unfortunately was uh, retired on the first lap uh, due to a crash. I do believe that the Williams we saw involved with the incident was Nemo because he's down at the back of the like, tail end of the field. Um, the big movers so far are definitely the two McLaren boys with... Uh, Jono now up, in, up into P3 and B8 man up into P7. So, McLaren bringing the points home today. They certainly are third and seventh, bringing home the bacon there for the McLaren team. V8 man and Big Dick Johnson. Uh, Crumpkin as well has, uh, has also jumped up five places as Sam has retired. What happened to Sam? He's off. You can see the Alfa Romeo yeah. there in the background and he is off the track. And uh, is it turn 9 and 10 there, or 8 and 9? And, 11 uh, and 12. 11 and 12, there we go. As uh, Sam off, DRC Jared, you are right, he is out of this race. And, uh, well, yellow flags in Sector 1, Sector, sector 2 and Sector 3. We had a virtual safety car on the practice race last week, but, uh, well, we haven't seen a safety car yet, Brad. No, we haven't seen a safety car yet. And it's a bit strange because a lot of the accidents, especially Big Donner's one, uh, was right on the middle of the track and we didn't get no safety car. Unfortunately, we don't get to see any of Donald's famous dive bombs today. Um, as Nemo's also left the session, uh, we had Sam Chan crash out of 11 and 12, which is very easy to do, trust me. I've, I've been doing a bit of practice with the guys that are racing and I was doing it probably once every few laps, so it's very easy to do. Um, it's unfortunate for the guys that are caught up in you know, the business at the back, but they don't see the race race through because anything can happen in a race. Like we say, Brad, we say it each and every week, anything can happen in racing and it usually does and I reckon something's about to happen here because Harry is through, but uh, Bailey's not gonna take that lightly, I don't reckon, as we ride on board with the Renault. Sam saying it wasn't his brightest moment, but don't worry about that. We still love you, and you're still famous to us. Uh, of course, the man with the Facebook page, uh, F1 Banter. That's right, I got it. How good is that? But look at this, lap six out of 29 now. A 127.6 for BK is down into the first corner. He uh, couldn't quite get it done there. That was a little bit, almost a corner cut there. As uh, Bailey, Bailey, Bailey now with DRS. Here we go, around the outside. Harry stays on the inside, down into turn three. And can he hang it around the outside? No, Harry shuts the door. So the Mercedes uh, stays in P1 there. It's Renault P2. And a bit further behind this lot is Big Dick Johnson in P3. Further back is the Hef, the lead Ferrari. There we go, Big Dick Johnson in P3. Then it's the Hef in P4. In a bit of a McLaren sandwich at the moment there with V8 man Dane. The man, the myth, the legend, as we always say. As, uh, oh, there was a move there, I think, for position, I think, Wilco. Cart dude and Wilco, cart dude into the pits then, and out again. So, uh, he's almost done Daniel Ricciardo there and hit the grass at that spot, but Wilco goes up a position then as well. Cart dude out in front of Crumpkin, who rounds out your top 10 at the moment. Then Daniel Sun, 
who's ghosting there in P11. So I don't think he's part of the action. But, uh, well, 15 drivers started and we've already lost four. 11 drivers left and we are on lap seven out of 29. Brad, no chance of rain, but it's still very cloudy. But uh, no chance of rain, we've been told. Yeah, no chance of rain. And it's a bit unfortunate. I believe a bit of rain in this race would have spiced things up, especially for the guys at the back. That could have very well brought them in because the guys at the front, you know, they could have been caught out if there was some rain. They could have went for an extra lap while the guys at the back could have pitted and hopped on the tyre at the right time. But since there's no rain, it's just a bit cloudy. The tyres will be off the most of them, I found. So we've only got 10 guys left. Danielson's a ghost because he left. Um, unfortunate that we've lost five drivers already, but it's, it's anything is still possible. And we've got BK, uh, who I may have called out a few weeks ago. He definitely doesn't have that reputation of crashing into people anymore, and it's actually great to see how far that he has progressed from when I had raced against him previous. As we ride on board with our leader, uh, BK, formerly Trickshot, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Bailey Kennedy, uh, a lot more experience, though, in the uh, in the league racing game as we take a look four drivers have made pit stops here on lap 18 out of 29 and you can see there the detail on your screen we've got five drivers on the uh, still on the soft tires three drivers on the mediums and wilco cartoon and crumpkin all on the harder tires and uh, wilco and cartoon uh, pitting just a lap or so ago so it'll be interesting to see how long wilco can run on those hard tires i suspect he can go all the way to the end as, uh, as we ride on board now with the Mercedes-Benz car. Yellow flag in sector three. But I'm not sure who that is as uh, New Zealand Ryan and Mozza having a great old conversation there in the live stream. As, boy, it's, it's happening everywhere at the moment as uh, my phone's going off. Please, please, for the love of God, nobody rings me except between 8 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. each Thursday night when we're doing this. But uh, here we go, lap nine out of 29. And this is the closest battle on track at the moment, Brad. We've got uh, BK and the Renault and Harry. Uh, that gap now just a second, but there's no other really close battles. And as soon as I say that, uh, we've got uh, a pit stop there. Toro Rosso into the pits. Looks as though it is Fubbles there, the man using the, uh, the pad user. And he's coming out. He's all on his own there. But that gives Wilco another position, Brad. So up to P7 at the moment. Wilco, as he has a slight moment there through turn four. It's been a great recovery drive for him at the moment. It'll be interesting to see how far he can take these tyres uh, in the race. I believe he could take them to the end, but they would be very warm. So he may do the strategy, like I said, where he'll jump onto the soft tyres with a few laps to go. It all depends where he is. He may just want to maintain track position. So he may risk staying out. As uh, Harry Ryan just got a penalty, and I believe that's because he went into the pits. Uh, the guys that are getting five seconds, by the way, when they pit again, they will serve a five second stop go penalty. Interesting. Interesting stuff as uh, Harry comes out now. And uh, that's going to be interesting. The strategy, we're expecting one stop here tonight as uh, Harry comes out in third place then. So that'll be, uh, we suspect, his one and only stop here tonight. And that puts BK into the lead, but uh, well, interesting call then. So Harry, the team at Mercedes have, uh, have they've actually, if they play their cards right, I reckon they might come back out into the lead. It's 18 seconds. You need roughly 18 to 20 to make a stop here and get back out in the lead. But uh, can BK stay out front, Brad, on those soft tyres? He's gone nine laps on those soft tyres. Can he stay out and maintain the gap or increase that gap back to Harry? I believe if he pushes hard enough on his, like, in-lap, he may be able to do it. But as you can see, Harry's already taking chunks out of him on these hard tyres. And to be honest, they're not too far off the medium tyre in, like, terms of speed. So Harry may well come out on top with an even bigger lead than he already had when he pitted. Yes, there we go as uh, we see Bailey BK11 crossing the line. Then it's a 128.8. 8 
on that last lap. So we might just see what the times are, fastest laps. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can get the last lap up on your screen, but there we go. There, there are the fastest laps of this race. As uh, Moz has been good enough to join us, he's in the he's in the comments now. He's in the lobby. How good is that lap? 11 out of 29. Beautiful view here through this Albert Park circuit in Melbourne as V8 Man gets a three-second time penalty. Strict corner cutting on here tonight. We did mention the uh, corner cutting hotspots. Uh, just living in a corner cutter's paradise. Uh, sorry, I won't start singing because this is the real stuff and you probably don't want to hear that. But the next question, lap 11 out of 29. When is this Renault coming in to the pits? That is the question. That lead down to 15 seconds. As here comes Harry now up towards the back of the McLaren. Is he going to go through? Yes. And he takes V8 man and goes up to P3. And that battle was not going to last very long, was it, Brad, with Harry on those brand new hard tyres? It definitely wasn't going to last very long, especially considering V8 man has done 10 laps on those medium tyres. But I believe the longer that BK stays out, this is going to be a detriment to where he comes out. Unless he's doing a different strategy, it may pay off in the end. But I believe Mercedes and Harry have made the right call on jumping onto the hard tyres because they can definitely go to the end of the race. Certainly can. And uh, as we ride, we stick with the Mercedes-Benz. Lap 11 out of 29 here. And uh, you've got to say that, like you said, Brad, the longer he stays out, and as soon as we say that, he's into the pits. Here he comes. He's out again. Geez, we're missing them, aren't we? We haven't seen anybody make a pit stop yet, but uh, I guess we don't know when they're coming out. But, oh, I was just about to say, he's going to come out very close to Big Dick Johnson. And Big Dick Johnson, he's gone with the medium tyres then. Has BK in the Renault. Very interesting, Brad. Could he be going for a two-stop strategy tonight? I believe that's the angle that he's going. Unfortunately, those mediums probably won't last to the end of the race. As like I did a few practice runs with a few boys, and they definitely went to dog shit after a few laps. Um, so Harry's definitely in the box seat to win here. He's got, uh, I believe, it's a 10 second gap or 8 second gap over BK, which is a lot more. He's gained 7 seconds in that pit stop phase. So Harry's uh, just on a bit of a Volto Bottas 2.0 style of a race here. Interesting stuff we'll, uh, as we ride on board now with Big Dick Jono getting very close there to the track limits. And is he doing a Valtteri Bottas? Valtteri Bottas 2.0. That didn't last very long, did it? Uh, up to about Bahrain, I reckon. But lap 12 out of 29 here. We're almost at half the race distance. And then we can say our usual catchphrase here. SRL round one of the new season. Great to have your company wherever you're watching us right around the world. Of course, if you want to get involved, just uh, visit all the w's.supremeracingleague.com.au or just flick myself uh, a message if you like. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you do feel like subscribing, by the way, please do. Uh, 1104 and counting. And uh, won't be long before we're, at, we're a movement, Brad. And we'll be taking donations as well. But uh, we've already got our main sponsor, the Beach Hut Brewery down there in Scoresby, Victoria. But uh, that is good. Great to have everybody's company, all 10 people watching the live stream. We love each and every one of you. As, uh, well, there's a pit stop then. Compact in the Haas. Into the pits and out of it again. And, uh, well, 8th and 10th at the moment for the two Haas drivers, Brad. And I don't know whether Gunter Steiner is going to be very happy with that. Uh, I believe Gunter would actually be quite happy with that, considering the pace of the real Haas. Haas. Considering they fell very far back in the race at Spa, so I believe 8th and 10th would actually be... Gunter would probably uh, love it, to be honest. The car's getting points, they're in the points, and uh, they're not falling down the back of the field. So. Yes, he would absolutely love it, you know. I mean, that's... Uh, he would love it. I mean, to both, both cars in the points. Uh, sorry, that's just cracking into the Toto Wolf. I'm going to stop it there as uh, DRC Jared... <laughs> <laughs> Great to have your company on the live stream as well tonight. He says uh, he reckons the mediums aren't going to last uh, too too long as V8 man. He seems to be doing okay on them up there in P2 as we flick through the order. There's the man, Fubbles. In, currently in P9, so a points finish for him. 46 seconds off the leader at the moment. Crumpkin is off the track doing a little bit of lawn mowing, but he's back on it again now. Currently uh, still in P10, Daniel Sun. 
And uh, we always seem to have that ghost, uh, the customary ghost driver, don't we, down there at the back of the field. Sam, Nemo, Big Donger and Rick Oztek have all retired as we ride back on board then lap 14, which usually means that we can say that thing we say, Brad, take it away. Oh, me? Jeez, put me on the spot. Half the race gone and half still to go. You know, I wouldn't throw down to you if you weren't ready for it, brother, but how good is that? Half the race gone, half still to go. It's absolutely magnificent. Oh, it's my favourite line. That's my uh, favourite line. It's bloody terrific, along with uh, the old one light to five lights when uh, when the lights are working, that is. But lap 14 out of 29. Let's just recap there for all 11 of you gorgeous people watching the live stream here tonight. It is Harry out in front by 6.3 seconds, if you don't mind, in the Mercedes-Benz ahead of V8 Man, who now is in to the pits. And remember, down to 80 kilometers an hour as he's got a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. So obviously, Brad, he didn't make the, uh, he didn't make it down to 80 k's. He definitely didn't. And unfortunately, they don't serve the five second stop go penalty. Unless something's changed, they may have. But I believe he just didn't release the clutch there because when you get the penalty, you're not able to serve it until the next time you stop. So, Unfortunately for VA man, I don't believe that he's going to be stopping again. So that's going to be five seconds added to the end of his race time. There we go. As uh, the McLaren comes back out onto the track there behind the ghost of the Mercedes. Maybe it's the ghost of Valtteri Bottas. Valtteri Bottas 2.0. No, we're only joking, aren't we? But uh, it's the championship still not over, of course. So with Monza coming up this week in the real life F1 stuff. But uh, V8 man then on the hard tyres, so that should see him through to the end of the race. As Kart do then in the Williams. Uh, how would you describe his race? Uh, Brad, he had a bad start, he dropped a few positions off the line. We saw him involved in that incident in Turn 1 and he just hasn't quite put the race together tonight. It hasn't been his night, has it? No, it definitely hasn't. I'd say that it's definitely been a bit of a lacklustre race for him. But he's on the right tyre to go towards the end of the race. So, you, with racing, you never know what might happen as he's coming up on the ghost of Danielson. Um, unfortunate for Brody, I, I rated him as a contender for the championship, and I still do. It's just unfortunate that he was caught out in the uh, lap one drama. So, uh, hopefully next week, uh, he'll be able to show his true pace and his true form, and... Uh, He'll be up towards the podium. Let's hope uh, for all the Taswegians out there watching. Uh, let's hope. Uh, he's one of our favourites, isn't he? Not that we have favourites, of course. Uh, that's all just a conspiracy. But, uh, yes, we hope Cart Dude can hook it up for the next round, of course, of this championship. Next Thursday night, 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Have I mentioned subscribe? Please do if you feel nice and want to subscribe to this channel. But uh, I've got to say, just looking... Uh, as we ride with Harry at the moment, he is absolutely flying at the moment, isn't he? Uh, Brad, and he's got the fastest lap of the race of a 125.367. And I can't see too much uh, stopping him, uh, except himself, uh, from winning this race tonight. But still 13 laps, like you said, anything can happen. Anything can happen, and I believe it would have to be a good old... Uh... Mercedes problem from a few years ago that actually happened in Australia that took, uh, I believe it was Hamilton out of the race. Uh, Harry's got a five second lead at the front. Uh, BK is catching him slightly, but I believe his medium tyres are going to go off the cliff way earlier than the hard tyres. Those hard tyres can go right to the end of the race. I believe BK's been caught out by the strategy here, and he may be a bit dirty on himself, but uh, I mean, if he gets the strategy right, he definitely will be a contender in this championship. No doubt about that. He will be back as Alan Shep, the big Shepster himself. There's not, not a lot happening in this race at the moment, I've got to say. The, uh, the field spread is quite large, but we've still got 12 laps to go. You never know. And uh, big Shep there. And uh, we might start taking some, uh, some song requests or some, <laughs> some requests. As he says, Bruce McAvaney. The Wilco special. Shep, great to have you along tonight, isn't it? You just get the feeling that something special's about to happen shortly. 
But uh, fantastic Shane, of course, down there at the Beach Hut Brewery in Scoresby. I know you're watching, and it's a very delicious time as well. So thank you, <laughs> Shep. Thank you to Bruce as well. But uh, Brad, growing up with rugby, uh, rugby league, you probably don't know who Bruce McAvaney is up there in New South Wales. But still, uh, it's great to have his company tonight. And uh, boy, lap 17 out of 29 as we ride on board with the McLaren. 13 seconds off our leader. But uh, not a bad performance tonight. A good haul of points, you'd say, Brad. Third and sixth at the moment for the McLaren team. Definitely a good haul. And uh, Jono's definitely come out of nowhere to secure a podium spot. I believe uh, for a long time, this is uh, going to be McLaren's best finish since, I believe, the Australian Grand Prix in uh, 2016, I believe, when... Kevin Magnussen was driving? No, sorry, it would have been 2014 when Kevin Magnussen was driving for them. So, uh, 36, those boys are doing very well. I've got to say, a very underrated driver uh, is sitting in P4 at the moment. He's just done the job, he's kept out of trouble, he's kept a level head, and he's sitting in fourth place right now, and he's the lead Ferrari. Uh, nice point haul for Ferrari as well, fourth and fifth at the moment. Uh, I believe Jason is still going to be dirty on himself at that start. He's going to be very, very dirty. But like you said, this, uh, the man, the number, I don't want to call him the number two at Ferrari, but uh, you are right. You're spot on, Brad. A very underrated driver is the Hef 81. Dave Heffernan, a top bloke, a top man. And, uh, well, I guess the next question is, uh, well, Wilco's not really making any inroads, is he? Uh, his hard tyres are 16 laps old compared to Hef's, who are 8 laps old. So, uh, well, they've gone through double the amount of wear so far with 10 laps to go in this race. As we can see, a Haas coming into the pits there. It looked like Crump and I think, minus a front wing. And we'll just uh, follow his pit stop. And he gets a five-second penalty again for speeding in the pit lane. So uh, a lot of drivers falling foul of the pit lane speed limiter. There we go, the Haas, off goes the old front wing. Medium tyres off, medium tyres on. As Crumpkin also appears to be running a special tribute helmet as well. The pink uh, on his helmet for Antoine Hubert, who uh, tragically passed away last weekend. Back out on track now, P11 for him, two laps down, Crumpkin. And he just gets out of the way there of the ghost of Daniel Sun. But uh, I'm guessing that that ghost is actually in front of him there. Uh, Brad, as he lets the uh, P9, he lets Fubbles go through. So still, you never know if he sticks with it. He could be a chance of a point here on the Haas. He definitely could be. Uh, he is two laps down at the moment. But um, I believe if he's able to get past Danielson's ghost, which goes around at a snail's pace, to be honest. He definitely should be able to uh, catch him and take back that point position. As we see him struggling at the moment, I don't know if he's lost a bit of an end plate or not, but things just aren't going right for Pumpkin at the moment. No, it's uh, it's not going right, but I'll tell you who, uh, I'll tell you what's going right. This man's race at the moment, he's uh, sitting pretty out front in the number 19. And uh, how fitting would it be, Brad, if the number 19, given the uh, the tragedy of last weekend, if the number 19 could uh, get up and win tonight? It's uh, You think it's almost just meant to be, but still nine laps to go in this race. 4.2 seconds is the gap. And uh, BK and the Renault there, he's slowly reeling him in. But, uh, well, it's just going to be interesting to see how that uh, two-stop strategy of his, Brad, is going to work because... He's going to come out somewhere around the Hef and possibly Wilco as well. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see when he makes his next pit stop. And as soon as I say that, he's picked up a three-second time penalty as well for corner cutting. So not going the way he would have liked it, but still he's up there in P2. He's up there in P2 and, yeah, picking up a penalty, that's a bit unfortunate and he's not going to like that. He is catching Harry at a rate of knots. But then again, the general wear on the mediums is way more than on the hard tyres so he may potentially catch up to him but I don't know if he was to pass Harry if he would be able to make it to the end of the race. Uh, we, the closest battle at the moment I believe is between Jason and uh, our man Dano. Uh, Dano's one second, 
two seconds behind Wilco and catching him at a rate of knots because Jason's tyres are 18 laps old and Dano's on a fresh set with, uh, that's only had five laps run on them. So anything uh, as Wilco just jumps into the pits to put on a set of soft tyres. So he's had to make that move as Nemo has, uh, has said that is Harry's normal number. Uh, the number 19, of course, and, uh, well, there's another number 19 then. That's also uh, Wilco's number as well. So Harry Ryan, 19, and Wilco both running the number 19, which is fitting, like we said, particularly this week as Wilco comes into the pits and a set of soft tyres, Brad. So we could be on for a possible fastest lap here and uh, a late race charge from Wilco in the final eight or so laps. Yeah, we're definitely on for a late race charge by Wilco. He's incredibly fast around here. I mean, one extra point for the fastest lap, it may satisfy him, but I don't think it's going to satisfy him to the point of where he could have finished today. And that's really unfortunate, but hopefully we see him come through the field and who knows, other people's tyres may wear or they may crash. So you never know where Wilco could end up. He's in P9 at the moment. Uh, with his teammate in P4, it's still a pretty good and decent point spot. Certainly is as stressed budget racing it wants to know how much faster are the soft tyres. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I reckon they're going to be a fair bit faster. We'll keep an eye on Wilco's lap times and also Danielson down there in uh, in P9 and 10. Wilco and Danielson both on the soft compound tyres. Then lap 22 out of 29. And I don't know whether there's going to be any team orders here, uh, <laughs> here Brad, between the ghost of, uh, of Danielson and, uh, and Harry. But uh, I don't think there'll be too many issues getting through here. But uh, Harry leads this race then three seconds. So that gap's come down. But still, like we said, BK has to make a stop. Big Dick Johnson there in P3. And uh, then it's the Hef in a McLaren sandwich there in P4. Ten seconds further back is V8 Man. And then Cart Dude in P6, who's making some inroads on V8 Man there in P5. But uh, still not enough, I reckon, with seven laps to go as we'll go through this order. Like we said, BK in P2, Big Dick Johnson in P3. Then it's the Hef, the lead Ferrari in this race. V8 man in P5, Cart Dude in P6, Compact in the Haas. And in P7, then it's Fubbles in P8 and Wilco all over the back of him at the moment. And he is through. And boy, Bradley uh, Fubbles was not putting up much of a fight there at all. No, Fubbles really didn't. He uh, basically let Jason through, and I mean, it may have been the smart thing to do considering that Fubbles is on 13 like, uh, old hard tyres, and Jason just came out on a fresh set of softs. So, uh, Fubbles actually uh, a bit of a blessing there for Wilco. Yes, there we go. So, straight through then, and uh, Fubbles knew better than to, uh, to argue that one. As we keep going through, like we said, Fubbles there in P9. Daniel Sun, the ghost of Daniel Sun in P10. Crumpkin in P11, still outside the points. And that gap is closing, isn't it? Back to 2.7 seconds. So you can see uh, BK, can he get to the end on these medium tyres as he ghosts uh, through Daniel Sun? And uh, it's interesting, Harry, has he got a penalty as Wilco? No surprises there. Brad sets the fastest lap of a 123.9 here. So just six laps remaining until the end of this one. And boy, I wonder if those medium tyres, still six laps to go, Brad. I don't know whether they can last till the end. Uh, I don't believe they will be able to last till the end. Like I've said previous, it was probably the wrong strategy call from BK. But I mean, he's catching Harry and he's staying within that distance that it's, it puts a pressure on the driver to maintain and keep it on the road. So, even though he's two seconds back, it's going to put pressure on Harry to keep focus and just keep it on the track. Um, uh, yeah, we've seen Wilco set the fastest lap, and he's making inroads on contact really quickly. There we go. So you can see there, Wilco, 3.756 seconds behind Compact in the Haas. And boy, that is coming down at a rapid rate of knots, so I reckon he'll be all over the back of him. In, uh, in the not too distant future. As you can see then, so BK, Harry still in the lead. BK in P2, 2.5 seconds now behind our leader. And then it is Big Dick Johnson in P3. 
There we go, all out on his own then. The Hef there in P4, V8 man in P5, Dane, the man from Brisbane. And then it's Cartu not making too many more inroads on V8 man then, P7. And boy, oh boy, pressure galore. You can see the Ferrari in the background of Jason Wilkinson there. And uh, boy, a comeback drive. If ever I've seen one though, he still won't be happy with that. He would have liked to have gone a bit further up the order, I reckon, but uh, still nothing wrong with that. As we take a look then, you can see Wilco. He's dropped seven places, but still in P8. Then we've got Fubbles, who's gone up one position, started P10, now in P9 at the moment. And then it's Daniel Sun and Crumpkin three laps down. 25 laps gone, four to go out of this 29 lap race. Hope you're enjoying the SRL season opener here from Albert Park in Melbourne. And it's been great to have everybody's company. Big Shep, Nemo, Butler, Moza, New Zealand, Ryan, Sam, who uh, crashed down a long time ago. But still, it's been great to have everybody on the live stream tonight. And hopefully, uh, you'll come back and watch us next week as we see then Harry coming through. And what is going through his mind at the moment? He's just controlled the race perfectly, hasn't he? He missed out on pole position. He crashed out of qualifying, of course. But he just has not put a foot wrong in this race. And a few comments on the live stream about asking about any penalties which he may have. I can't recall seeing whether he's got any penalties. We might see if you can check that on the race director. But anyway, lap 25 now. Not too far to go, and it's looking good for this man at the moment. Definitely is looking good for Harry Ryan. He's definitely just controlled this race from start to finish. I mean, Jace went, Jason went uh, defensive at the start of the race. And maybe that wasn't the best move as it led him onto the grass. Uh, Harry's just uh, controlled this race real stomaching style pretty much. Uh, BK is catching him. But again, I, I don't know if these tyres are going to be an optimal range for him to pass. With only three laps to go, he's catching him, but I don't know if, it's going to be, if he's catching him quick enough to make a last, last lap dive on the last lap. As Wilco then, like we said, it wouldn't take long uh, before he got into P7 then, up ahead of Compact in P8, of course. Uh, Wilco on the fresh, brand new soft tyres. As you can see there, the drivers, three pit stops, uh, two pit stops for Wilco and everybody else except for Crumpkin on a one-stop strategy here tonight. And you can see that on your screen how many laps these tyres have done. Wilco with the fresh, soft tyres. And he is up into P7, 13 seconds behind this man, Cart Dude. And I can't see him getting, uh, getting ahead of Cart Dude before this race is out. As uh, we're almost winding down, aren't we? I know there's never, never often too many dull moments here, Brad. But with three laps to go, uh, everybody's sitting pretty at the moment and uh, all the positions look to uh, be remaining the same. But BK still has not made a pit stop. And I guess it's almost too late now, isn't it? The opportunity's gone because he will lose one, if not two positions there. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe he was doing the one-stop strategy after all and we've just... Uh presumed that it was going to be a two-stop, uh, because that was definitely what the strategy called for when you changed to mediums, that it was a two-stop strategy. So the fact that he's been able to keep these tyres alive for so long is honestly astonishing, because they shouldn't be lasting this long. Uh, Harry's uh, just, uh, you know, kept in the front, kept it quiet, done his job. It's been a stellar drive for him. Everyone's... Uh, just in their own positions and I believe this is how it may shape up uh, at the end of the race with everyone with a solid gap in between each other. So interesting stuff then, two laps remaining until the end of this one and BK, we were just uh, riding with him there as he had a bit of a moment so that's going to put him further back uh, behind Harry so he's done 15 laps on those medium tyres and you shouldn't be doing that many laps on the medium compound tyre as a big dick johnson then in p3 and it will be interesting to see whether this will be the pecking order for the rest of the season uh, i reckon we might see wilco and maybe even cart dude up there brad during the course of the season but for tonight then on the penultimate lap of this race 
it looks like it's going to be the Mercedes-Benz of Harry Ryan taking this season opening race win here at Albert Park in Melbourne as Fubbles picks up a three-second time penalty for multiple corner cutting warnings as Wilco then all in his lonesome in P7 compact P8 Fubbles then in P9 as Kane says bloody hell as we go back to our race leader and we might just stick with him here at the moment the Mercedes-Benz driver who is going to taste victory here in round one of this championship and 3.5 seconds is the gap between himself and BK. And who knows, he would have been a little bit down on confidence, Brad, going into this race uh, after crashing in qualifying, but he just has not put a foot wrong. And get your comments in on the live stream as well to uh, vote for your driver of the day. And we'll be uh, reading you any comments, any questions, any feedback for us as well up here in the commentary box. We'll be reading the uh, comments out as well. Oh, he has a little bit of a moment. As uh, well as uh, I nearly put the commentator's curse on him there, Brad. As soon as I uh, gave him a rap, he uh, almost let me down. Uh, I believe the same thing happened to me when I was talking about BK and how he has uh, maintained these tyres. He had a little moment out of 12. So uh, the commentator's curse is uh, definitely real. Um, although he's made up a second within a lap, and it is the last lap of the Grand Prix, I don't believe that he's going to catch him, as Kart Dude has now gone up to fifth position. So V8 Man may have had a moment. So V8 Man, uh, v V8 Man, I should say, having a little bit of a moment there. Kart Dude is up to P5. And that gap is uh, is closing up at the front. We might just stick with Harry. Harry Ryan up the front there, as uh, you may not have noticed. Crumpkin has retired from the race. Kane Leishman saying, I have no luck in these races. But uh, still, so there you go. 15 drivers started the race. And V8 Man's got a bit of a problem then. He's into the pits. So uh, that's not going to be good for him. But here we go. Let's bring this man home here tonight. He missed out on pole position, but he has not put a foot wrong in the race proper then. It's going to be the Mercedes team winning in the number 19, Harry Ryan 19. How fitting, given the events of last weekend. He comes across the line to win the Australian Grand Prix and the opening round of this SRL championship. What uh, is... Got controversy. Oh, hello. Has he got penalties here? We're not done with yet, he folks. Has. He's got penalties in BK. That's why. Maybe that's why he was staying out and not pitting. Because Harry had penalties. Unbelievable stuff. Talk about the commentator's curse. I was giving him a rap. And uh, all of a sudden, he's uh, they've swapped places and he's in P2. So Bailey, 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 Bailey has won this race. Incredible stuff as uh, Big Dick Johnson gets a podium finish for the Mercedes team. As Wilco uh, is still running, Hef then, the second Ferrari finishes in P4. Cart Dude crosses the line. Here comes Wilco across the line then in P6. I think you'll get an extra point as well for the fastest lap in this race. And then Compact finishing in P7 across the line for Haas. Gunter Steiner will be happy with that. As uh, here comes Fubbles then in the Toro Rosso. Across the line. Stick around. We'll be interviewing our top three drivers. Uh, not quite in the order I was expecting, Brad. But uh, the Toro Rosso comes across the line. Now V8 man. And what happened to him? He was sitting in P5, wasn't he, in the second McLaren? But now he made a pit stop. He got into some trouble. And he comes across the line in P9. And that is the end of the race. We don't hear that music in the background because usually FOM come after us. But, uh, well, what controversy here in the season opening race here at Albert Park. As we wait for the drivers to come up onto the podium. And it's that man, Brad. Bailey Kennedy, BK11, taking victory here tonight. And fitting as well. Paying tribute, of course, to Antoine Hubert with the number 19. As we see the champagne. There you have it, the Renault. Formula One management. 
I've got uh, I've got a message for Formula One manager, but I won't say it here. As uh, the top three there you saw on the podium, dun, 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 dun. as uh, BK then controversy in the end, he takes victory in this race for Renault. Harry Ryan in P2 there for Mercedes AMG Petronas. He had eight an eight second penalty ahead of Big Dick Johnson in P3. So McLaren. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, that song gets me every time, Brad. But Hef in P4. Who would have thought coming into the start of this race that Hef would finish ahead of our man Wilco? Can't do it in P5. In a little bit of a Ferrari sandwich, you might say. Uh, Wilco says, well done, Wilco, from all here at the Beach Hut Brewery in Scoresby, Victoria. Big Shano and Big Shep having a frothy or two. And, uh, oh boy, Wilco, not a happy man. But I just want to say that I love you all down there at the Beach Hut Brewery. And uh, the rest of the results, we had 15 drivers start this race. I think we only had 10 finishes in at the end as we wait for our top three to join the post-race interviews. And I'm not sure whether I'm friends with any one of them, Brad, Brad because... Yeah, neither. <laughs> I might... I might um, I, uh, driver of the day, cart dude, says it's the Hef. As, uh, well, I've been shown how to do this. Here we go. We've got all 10 people who are still watching us on the live stream. And can we suggest players? Players met. How do we do this? Uh, how professional is this? Here we go. <laughs> I think it might be your party. So uh, whether you can invite... <laughs> whether you can invite... Um, and uh, BK. I, I, I did... I did invite our uh, conductor, Jason, but he hasn't joined because he has everyone as a friend, so... Um... That's, a, that's all right. I'm friends with the man himself, BK, but uh, I'm just trying to go through my friends list. How professional looking is this for everyone at home? All friends? I'll invite the chat. I'll just say uh, top three join, please. Top three, if they can join that party, that would be fantastic. I'm not seeing BK at the moment. And uh, and he's saying, uh, just invite me, he says. So uh, hang on, we'll, get, we'll work this out. So, yep, I think I'll just leave it. I'll go back to the lobby as we'll wait for these guys to come in to the party. Harry Ryan then has uh, re requested requested my friendship as Crumpkin has uh, joined the party. He didn't finish on the podium. Oh my god! And so he was didn't F. finish on the podium. <laughs> there we go. But uh, they've left the party. But uh, we'll just hang on. We'll just join here. We had three. Now we've got two again. But uh, boy, you think we would have sorted this out, wouldn't you? But uh, here we go. Yes. Um. Hold on. I will, uh... Calling full combat. So, we need BK. Harry's joined us in... Harry's in. ...the party. There oh, goes... B there's Bailey. BK. BK oh, yeah. is on his Hi, way. Hi, folks. I'll hey. send us to be mediator for this. There we go. I tell you what, we're a professional... <laughs> we're a professional outfit, that's for sure. It took us about 20 minutes to uh, get everybody in. And uh, I still think we're working on getting uh, on. We're gonna we keep working on getting Jono in. Invited them all. But uh, yeah, uh, not trick shot. We need BK. Uh, Mozza, yeah, sorry, you gotta go, bud. Yep, yeah, you're gonna have to. I'm go. mediator, mate. It's, it's, yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Yeah, all right, Moz. See you later. Thanks for coming. But um, anyway, BK, I've got the wrong account. So if someone could invite Bailey, and that would be great. Yeah, done. But uh, we might just yeah, start. There we go. There we go. That's an interesting uh, looking name. But uh, we'll start with our race winner tonight in the Renault. Bailey, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm there, mate. Awesome. Also, by the way, yep. you scroll past my name on your friends list about five times and you invited my old account. Yep. That says all, all right. All right. We'll, um, we'll, <laughs> okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. We've taken that on board. So talk us, <laughs> talk us through your race, mate. Uh, very emotional week down there at Renault, obviously, of course, with the events of last weekend, mate. But, uh, I've got to say, you ran the tribute there tonight, the number 19, the helmet as well, and uh, talk us through your race and uh, the opening race of this season. Well, starting P4 wasn't ideal for uh, myself because I believe I'd pace to get, maybe not pole, but at least on the front row. And then I seem to have jumped carted off the start, and if there was, if the first straight was longer, I reckon I could have got past Harry and Jason. But I sat behind them, there was a 
bit of a mix up, a like, like, bit of a tangle up there. So Jason went, so I was just sitting behind Harry for a little bit. Uh, bottom of my time, went for the overtake, but he got it back, and I just didn't really have the pace to um, get past him. And then we went on different strategies, as you would have seen up in the box. I was really contemplating switching my strategy to his, but I decided to stick with what the plans were from the start, and it, in the end, was just about who was the cleanest in terms of staying on the track and not cut the corners. Certainly was, mate. And a quick question uh, before I let you go. So those medium tyres, mate, how were they towards the end of the race? They, uh, You looked to have a bit of a moment there uh, coming oh, through. Oh, mate, I was shitting my pants when that one happened because I thought to myself, if I go on this wall and bottle this guaranteed podium now, like, this this race for Renault because Butler, he was having, um, he was having some steering problems. We believe he might have got some damage that, like, the, games, like, the game registered that we didn't see. Because he claims that he, had, we might have a bit of damage there. We're not too sure, but um, yeah, it was a scary moment. But in the end, um, we carried through. We ended up winning the race, and obviously, this race on behalf of Renault Sport, myself and Butler, we dedicate this race to the late great Antoine Hubert, a lost talent, 22 years old. Rest in peace. Awesome, good stuff, uh, Bailey. Thank you very much, and I'll make sure to uh, get the right account next time, boy. Uh, you know, pressure at all, but congratulations, mate, and all the best for next week as well. Thank you very much. Awesome. And uh, after that, uh, after the, or well, going to our man who finished in P2 tonight, Harry Ryan, 19. Mate, Harry, can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Mate, How talk us, uh, I'm, I'm in career best form, mate. And uh, you, so are you by the looks of it, mate. That was a fantastic race. Uh, but unfortunately, just the penalties getting you there, mate. The strict corner cutting. Uh, not that flash, yeah. but uh, still some positive signs to take out of tonight and into next week. Yeah, well, I, I got a really good start and uh, I went up against uh, Jason and he kind of swerved at me. I lost a bit of my front wing there, so that was kind of set me back then. Uh, we came out to the pit stop. I sped into the pits by 1 kph, so that kind of <laughs> messed my race over there. Then on the final lap, I got a penalty. So, kind of unlucky. I'll see if I can get it removed because I was doing the same thing for the for the whole race. But yeah, a decent race. Yes, you've still got to be happy with uh, with P2, mate. That's for sure. But uh, hard luck tonight. But still, mate, positive signs uh, for the f I guess for the coming weeks and also for this championship, mate. So well done. Thank you. And uh, Harry there, uh, geez, Brad, we might have to just correct Harry uh, about those. <laughs> Not sure whether we can go with that uh, Wilco swerved across sort of line. <laughs> no, just joking. But um, anyway, as we move to our man in P3, how well are we travelling tonight? Uh, this man, Big Dick Johnson and Big Jono, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yo, he gone. I'm just never been better, mate. Uh, you, more than one person's asked me that tonight, but fantastic, mate. Bit of a boring race in P3, but talk us through it, mate. What happened there? Oh, mate, it's pretty good. Um, um, yeah, it's kind of kind of open up to open up for me at, at turn one. Just went straight through there and up to the guts and got P3, you know. Um, after turn one, it was pretty much just running around, keeping it clean. Yeah. So, well, sounds interesting. Uh, I've got to say, uh, you've uh, you've pretty uneventful. I guess your teammate ran into some, into some trouble. I'm not sure what happened with him, but uh, you uh, were both on for a, a pretty decent points finish there for McLaren. But still, are you happy with P3, mate? Is there anything more you could have got out of the car or out of this race tonight? No, uh, I'm pretty happy with P3, mate. Um, no more if Jason and those guys didn't, didn't uh, crash out, I, I wouldn't have been P3, so awesome. yeah, it's pretty good. Awesome stuff, mate. Well, congratulations, mate, and all the best for next week. Cheers, mate. McLaren uh, getting into the top three there. So uh, just recapping, it was BK in the Renault, who, uh, who has a different uh, name on his account to what he's... Uh, Anyway, anyway, never mind about that, but congratulations to BK. Fittingly, the number 19 in the Renault. And uh, alongside Harry finishing in P2, Harry Ryan in the Mercedes-Benz. And then Big Dick Johnson, who you heard from a moment ago, finishing in P3. And I reckon we're nearly finished. Uh, it's been a cracking season opener, Brad. 
and uh, you've uh, done a fantastic job and hopefully everyone's enjoyed it at home as well. Everybody joining us on the live stream tonight. We're just about to wrap up, Brad, but it's been a terrific opening race, mate, and uh, it's been a pleasure to have your company as well. Definitely was a terrific race and a terrific uh, season opener. Bit of a uh, lap one drama and it definitely spiced things up going into this championship. I just want to give a quick little shout out to uh, Hef. I gotta say for me, he was definitely the driver of the day. He just kept it clean, kept to himself, you know, business as usual and he come out in fourth position. I gotta say he was my driver of the day. Driver of the day, the Hef, a quiet drive up into P4, staying out of trouble. And how good was that? We're almost out of time. Don't forget, next week from 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time, live and exclusive here on this Kid Buyers channel. Uh, it will be the Bahrain Grand Prix and round two of this SRL Championship. And uh, once again, we would like to thank you for your company tonight. And uh, like we said, once again, a special message uh, to Antoine Hubert, who uh, of course tragically passed away last week. But don't forget to join us next week from 8 p.m. Eastern time on this channel for round two of this championship. It's been great to have your company wherever you've been watching right around the world. And we will see you next week, but it's bye for now.